I'm here today with Nedjmi. Nedjmi is the analytical product and solutions business manager for the Northeast. And I had to look at my whiteboard because that's a long title. So uh, Nedjmi, welcome to my podcast. Thank you, Bill. Glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. So uh, Nedjmi, um, as the analytical product solutions, product and solutions business manager for Northeast, just what does that encompass? Um, and I think you've had that role for just a little less than two years now. Yes, that is correct, Bill. So I'm covering the northeast region of the country from Virginia to Maine, and I'm responsible of the analytical instruments like the core products, pH, conductivity, turbidity, dissolved oxygen. Plus, we have the color metric analyzers and we have the process photometers. Besides them, we have also SWAS panels, steam and water systems, and also free and total chlorine panel solutions. Wow, that's, uh, that's quite a big bucket under that portfolio there, my man. Yes, yeah. that's why we have the product business managers for the areas. <laughs> yeah, as as your rep, I can tell you, uh, Nejmi, um, you know, it's uh, it's there's a lot there, and and and, and we need your support uh, from folks at the NERC, and then we need support from the product uh, business managers like yourself. And thank you for being there for us. Um, hey, um, so. That's your current role. And before you got to your current role, I know you've had a diverse background with e &H. Um, I think even you spent quite a bit of time in Dubai. And quite frankly, for the folks watching this podcast, I think that would be of interest to them to hear about some of your uh, your uh, international, quote, worldly experience. Can you share that a little bit? What does that mean? Yes, Bill. So that is correct. Before starting with ENH US, I was with Andresen Hauser in the Middle East. We have a Middle East support center located in Dubai, and I've been there for three years, and previous to that, two years in Abu Dhabi, which is close to, to Dubai. And before that, actually, my starting role was with ENH sales center Turkey. And I've been with various roles within the company, so I keep the same company and change countries only, <laughs> the same company. So I started as a field technician in sales center Turkey. And then I did outside sales in Dubai. I did instructor role. So I was in service again, but teaching our service people how to conduct a field service or how to deal with our instrumentation and that was a role which is in line with the production centers so instead of sending our technicians to a central location the trainers were conducting the basic level training in the regions so i have i can say i have quite a little bit of technical knowledge and also sales experience as well and Coming here in the United States, I started with the inside sales role, and then I changed to the uh, product business manager role beginning of 19. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I know when you came to the United States, you were actually uh, put in as a technical asset embedded at Eastern Controls to help us as we transitioned into e &H as a technical resource, literally sitting like right in, right embedded with our inside sales team, right? Yes. So it wasn't so new experience to me because previously in Abu Dhabi, I was sitting in the same office with the representative and I had the experience before and it was really worth to be with the with the representative and share my knowledge, share my experience with them. And we also learn together. So there is no limit of learning. There were a lot of uh, interesting questions coming up and we we grow together, I would say. You know, that's that's one of the things that I really like working with you uh, on Najmi is the fact that it is a together type of when you work with me and you work with our other team members, I'm sure 
it's it's you're working together and you are a natural teacher and quite frankly, a natural mentor. So uh, I, I really enjoy that about your personality. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bill. So, um, hey, uh, one of the things I think is really interesting about you before we get into uh, some a uh, couple little product things, uh, you've had this international experience. You keep saying Abu Dhabi, or I, I'm not sure you can even pronounce it. Word. I certainly can't spell it. But I mean, how many um, how many languages can you speak? Um, uh, I think three or four, and a couple fluently. But what, what what's what's in your language bucket? So my mother tongue is Turkish. Okay. But I was born in Bulgaria, so I can speak Bulgarian too, uh, and English, of course. And I try to learn Arabic, but in the Middle East, in Dubai especially, it's an international city or country, I would say, for the United Arab Emirates. Everybody is speaking English, and I can I cannot say I'm, I'm speaking Arabic and I took some German classes, but I can catch some words or the conversation. But in total, I, I can say I'm speaking three languages. It's, it's pretty good, man. It's very, very good. I can speak one language, but uh, I, I admire people who can speak different languages and, and have that ability. Um, so, OK, so you've got this big bucket. And I know you're passionate about a product called MemoSense. I also know you're really excited about the fact that you now have the heartbeat technology and that and that MemoSense technology. And I also know you're kind of a mad scientist kind of guy and you've got a little so something set up in your laboratory there. And hey, let's share it with the folks watching this podcast. I think this is going to be really interesting for the folks uh, um, watching this. Go. So. I cannot say I'm a big math scientist, but I like, <laughs> I like making small experiments. So here I have a small setup. I have the remote display for our transmitter. Maybe you can see the screen. So yeah. since we mentioned the, the MemoSense, MemoSense is a digital communication between the sensor and the transmitter. Here I have the cable from the pH sensor. And this is an easy plug, so I can easily disconnect the sensor and there are no metallic pins between the cable connector and the sensor itself. And since it's digital communication, as soon as the, the connection is disturbed, I get a red screen, meaning there is something wrong and I get the explanation of the error message. So once I connect the sensor, it's that fast. It is automatically detected by the transmitter, no matter what type of measuring technology it is, either pH, conductivity, dissolved oxygen or turbidity or free chlorine. I don't need to do any settings. The transmitter will automatically detect it and will start to measure the reading. So here in the air, I have pH 2. And I would like to share the benefit of not having the pins on the connector and the sensor head. So typically with the conventional sensors, I would have to leave the sensor here at the top, not immersing the connector. And I would start to read the value on my screen. Mm -hmm. But with MemoSense, I can immerse it completely to the liquid and it still measures. I have no error messages. It is not affecting the reading. So I'm independent of the loop resistance, basically. So there is no corrosion, no humidity or no leak effects to my reading. And I can read how many hours it has been operated in the process. I can easily swap the sensor with a pre-calibrated one in the field, I can just swap the sensor and then put a new one, reduce the downtime, and then I can do the calibration in my lab or in my workshop. 
that's a big advantage to reduce the downtime. And since we mentioned the heartbeat technology is a verification tool which is embedded in the software, we have emojis showing the state of the sensors or the channel. Yeah. So each channel is represented with a small emoji. Now it's smiling, smiley face. And I can go individually to the transmitter and eat channels. For example, the pH one. Now I have the smiley face with the bar graph showing the health status of the sensor. The health status depends on the operating time, when the calibration was executed, and how much is the loop resistance. All these things are internally calculated and it comes with the bar graph. When the bar graph is at the zero level, it means now it's time to do a maintenance. So this tool is a good indication for preventative maintenance. It's not a lifetime prediction tool, so we should not mix it. I get a lot of this question, how long does a pH sensor last? Yeah. It really depends on the process. pH sensors are consumable like batteries, and it depends on the usage, how fast you drain the battery of your phone, for example. It yeah. is the same idea. So pH sensor may last a year, two years, or six months. It all depends on the process. But every pH sensor needs to be maintained, like cleaning and calibration. And that interval also depends on the process but this bar graph and heartbeat technology is a good indication to do or to decide when to do the maintenance. So Nejmi, on that, on that heartbeat, can that also be an output to their PLC or DCS? So for instance, you know, you got a pH probe on a tank and it's a critical area. Can that output go to your PLC or DCS that maybe something happens or that pH probe starts to fail or wave a hand and say, you know what, look at me, I'm, I'm failing. Can Heartbeat do that as well? I think it can, right? That's a great question. Yes, it can. So Heartbeat has three main parts. It's the diagnostics, which is on the main screen. This is the diagnostic part with the detailed information. The second is verification. We can run a verification and create a PDF report and export it to an SD card or directly connect with the Ethernet port. And the third one, which is related to your question, is heartbeat monitoring. Heartbeat monitoring can be used only with the digital communication. So we cannot relate it to the analog outputs, but if we have in our transmitter, like Ethernet or Modbus okay. output, we can we can monitor the health status of our sensors in our PLC or SCADA system. Yes, definitely we can do that. So thanks for answering that and clarifying that, Najmi. On the on the verification, um, what certainty? I mean, okay, if I'm a customer, hey, how do I know that this is real information? I mean, what what assurances are you giving me or what research and development have you done that assures me that this verification is accurate or true? And I, I think we go to a third party solution there, don't we, Najmi, if I remember correctly? Maybe talk to that real briefly. Yes, that is traceable. We have the same heartbeat technology for flow meters and also for level instruments, but for the uh, analytical instruments, we have the same type but we don't correlate it with any accuracy. So verification is uh, traceable. And this tool was tested by the third party in, in Europe. And that verifies the, uh, the functionality of our transmitter and the functionality of each sensor, each channel. This transmitter can handle up to eight channels and we can verify each channel with that verification report. 
once we run a report, that's like a snapshot taking a photo of the current status. The other part, like monitoring, is a continuous, continuously uh, checking the, the functionality. It's like video recording. So monitoring is video recording and verification report is a photo shooting. Okay. Okay. So, um, Nejmi, thanks for going over Memo Sense. Thanks for talking about Heartbeat. Um, thanks for giving us a really good snapshot on that. Um, I've been with you on several calls where we've we've talked about that technology. Um, I won't mention any specific names, but we have several users in my territory that use Memo Sense and and really, quite frankly, we love the technology. So. Um, and, and uh, I'm glad that you, thanks for sharing that with the podcast audience today. Um, so moving uh, to uh, another another um, part of our, our interview today, Nejmi, um, I always like to end things up with a story or some kind of anecdote or either industry or personal. And you've got a really interesting story to share with the audience about how you came to Anderson Hauser in the United States. If you don't, I, I think this is a great story, so please uh, share it. It's an awesome human interest story. Go ahead. So to me, it's also like a really interesting experience, but everything starts in the mind. And at that time, I was in Dubai working for Anderson Hauser uh, Middle East Support Center. And I just came to the United States for a visit and I decided, okay, it's a nice country. I mean, this is a good place to live. And I started to look for opportunities, but it's not that easy to change a place. So this is what I like with Anderson Hauser. It's an international company and opportunities are open. So you can work anywhere in the world. And I thought I came up with that idea and I knew nobody in, in the United States organization within Anderson Hauser when I was in Dubai, but it was just an idea. Why can I not work with Anderson Hauser in the United States? And there was no background, no connections, no network. <sighs> and I just asked for a name in the United States and I booked my flight ticket. <laughs> and even that name was not available during my visit. And he referred to the the front desk and I, I had no connections basically. And I went for a campus tour. So wait a second, wait a second. Did, did you literally like just walk through the front door and go, is so-and-so here? Yes, I knocked the door and I said, is there any open uh, job for me here? They were surprised, of course. I mean, who are you? <laughs> and I said, I'm coming from Dubai. I work for e and in Dubai. And <laughs> that is like, that's like the ultimate cold call, Benjamin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so here you are. Yes, and after a year, I was... Uh, with the onboarding and I was speaking to the human resources and they were really surprised. Wow. So a couple of years back, I was just knocking the door and after some time, I was employed by Anderson Hauser, United States. Wow. That was an interesting thing. So everything starts with an intention, I believe. So my intentions were good and I started with the first step. I took the first step. Of course, it's a process. So the missing part was the uh, residential status in my case. And just by coincidence, I got the green card. So I have the permanent residency for the United States and it all came together and here we are. So I'm glad to be here. I'm glad speaking with you. It's it's really interesting. 
Najmi, thanks very much for sharing that story. And uh, thanks very much for coming on to my podcast. Um, I I love working with you. I, I, I just, you're a great resource for me personally, for me and my customers and the customers of these controls. And again, you're a, um, a really good teacher and uh, mentor in, in, in your product area. So thank you again. Um, Folks, that's uh, going to wrap, wrap up today's uh, podcast. Um, this was Nejmi, or this is Nejmi, and uh, he's the analytical product and solutions business manager for the Northeast. And if you have a challenge in the analytical uh, arena, uh, reach out to us at East Controls, and we will do our best to uh, come up with a, uh, a solution. Thanks again, folks, and Nejmi, thank you again. Thank you, Bill. Pleasure is mine. Thank you.